Hello everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to my channel, Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, we're going to hit the CLI and I'm going to show you how to configure dynamic NAT using pools on a Cisco router. Don't forget to check the description of this video where you can find the configs that I use so that you can try it in your own lab or maybe even follow along with me. Here's the topology for today for the dynamic NAT configuration lab. This is the same exact topology from the static NAT video as well. If you recall from the static NAT video or static NAT in general on Cisco routers, it requires us as the network engineers to configure one-to-one -one individual mappings. So every IP address that needs to be translated, we need to configure static mappings and that doesn't scale well. We want the router to do that for us automatically. We're going to tell the router that when packed packets arrive on your NAT inside interface and they come from a specific subnet, translate them. Translate their source IP address to a pool, a configured pool of inside global IP addresses. After that's configured, when PC1 on the left in blue wants to talk out to the internet, like to ping 8.8.8.8, it's going to get NATed to the first available IP address in our pool. When PC2 wants to talk out to the internet, it gets NATed to the next available IP address in the pool. And it's going to keep doing that as long as their address is available in the configured pool. Now, if this is your first time watching this video, I'm just going to go through the topology really quick. Our area in blue, that's our inside private enterprise network. We have a single subnet of 10.10.10.0 slash 24, and there's two PCs in that subnet. We have PC1 and PC2 with IP address .1 and .2. On the far right is going to be the DNS server with IP 8.8.8.8, .8 and we're going to be using that to test connectivity between the PCs and the DNS server. And if you look in the middle, right above the NAT enabled router, we have a subnet 11.11.11.0 slash 29. That is a public IP address block the ISP gave us to translate IP addresses. That is going to be our pool of IP addresses to translate to. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do when it comes to NAT is you need to define the inside and the outside interface. Now, if we look at the diagram, the interface on the right, gig 0 slash 0, is connected to the area in red. That is our outside global internet. So that's going to be our outside interface. The interface on the left, gig 0 slash 1, connects to the inside, right? Our private internal network. That's going to be our inside interface. Let's get that configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to config T, and I'm going to go under interface gig 0 slash 1, and I'm just going to say IP NAT inside. So you can put in, or you can just press tab to complete it. So IP NAT inside. Interface gig 0 slash 0, IP NAT outside. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to configure an access control list. Now, I need this access control list because I need to tell the router that when packets arrive on the inside interface from a specific subnet to translate those IP addresses. So I'm going to configure a standard ACL. So I'm going to say access list 10, permit 10.10.10.0, and it's a slash 24 network. Now, with ACLs, we're not putting the subnet mask here. We're putting the wildcard mask. So 0.0.0.255. With traditional ACLs, when you see the permit or deny, you're thinking allow or, or drop traffic. We're not doing that in this case. We are only using this ACL to match specific traffic when it arrives on the inside interface. If traffic arrives on the inside interface and the source IP address comes from 10.10.10.0 slash 24, then translate it. Now, I came up with the wildcard mask value for the slash 24 of 0.0.0.255. If you don't know how to come up with that value yourself, I want to show you. It's really easy and really quick. What you're going to do is you're going to take all 255s, so 255.255.255.255, and you're going to subtract the subnet mask, its dotted decimal format. So the subnet mask for slash 24 is 255.255.255.0, right, for a slash 24. Let's go ahead and do some simple math. So 255 minus 255 is 0. What's 255 minus 255? 0. What's 255 minus 255? 0. What's 255 minus 0? 255. So 0 .0 .0 255. And that's how I came up with the value for the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Now that the ACL is configured, the next thing I need to do is to configure my pool, right? We're halfway done. We told the router, okay, translate IP addresses that come from this source 
of 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Now we need to tell the router, once you receive those specific packets, what are you going to translate them to? Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say IP NAT. Remember, all of your NAT configuration is pretty much going to start with IP NAT. Now we're configuring a pool, so I'm going to say pool. And if you hit question mark, it's asking for the name of the pool. What do you want to name the pool? I want to keep it simple, something that makes sense to me. So I'm going to say my dash pool. And if I hit question mark here, it's asking me, hey, what's the starting IP address for the pool? What is the first available IP address that you want to translate to? Well, since the ISP gave us an 11.11.11.0 slash 29 network, the first available IP in that is 11.11.11.1. If I hit question mark here, it's asking me, what is the ending IP address? It wants to know what is the last available IP address you want to translate to? Well, since we have a slash 29 network, What's the last usable IP address? Well, in our network, it's going to be 11.11.11.6. So I'm going to say 11.11.11.6. Let me hit question mark again. Now it's asking me, once we translate the source IP address, what subnet mask should it have? And we can define that here in two different ways. We can say net mask or prefix length. So if I hit net mask, and I hit question mark, it's asking me what is the network mask. And since we're dealing with a slash 29, that's going to be a 255.255.255.248. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. If I didn't want to enter it that way, what I could do is I can say the other option, which was prefix length. And then if I hit question mark, it's asking for a value between 1 and 32. And we are dealing with a slash 29, so I can just say 29. Now we're almost done here. We've configured, besides the inside and outside interfaces, we've configured two individual things. We configure the ACL, so we know what traffic to translate from, and we configure the pool. These are two individual pieces of config, and we need one more thing to kind of glue them together. And that configuration is going to be this. We're going to say IP NAT inside source list. And what's the access list number? The access list number that we used was 10. We used a standard ACL. Now, if I hit question mark here, we have some options. I want to select pool. And then what did we name the pool? We named it my pool, right? My dash pool, all capital. What this command is doing is we are saying IP NAT. Remember, everything NAT on the Cisco router starts with IP NAT. We are translating the source IP address of packets that arrive on the inside interface. Not every packet, but only those that are matched in access list 10. Once we find those packets that arrive on the inside interface that are sourced from the network defined in access list 10, translate them to a pool of IPs that we defined in the pool named my pool. So this line here is taking the pool configuration and merging it with the access list configuration. So the two talk to each other. So they're both on the same page. Let's go ahead and hit enter and we're done. Let's go ahead and test connectivity from PC one and PC two. I'm going to go ahead and ping 8.8.8.8. .8 Perfect. I have reachability. Let's check the NAT translation table. Show IP NAT translations. Cool. I have one translation from 10.10.10.1, which is my inside local IP address, so the IP address of PC1. It was translated to the first available IP address in the pool. This is my inside global IP address. This is our globally routable IP address that's representing PC1 on the inside. The destination IP address was 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 which is our outside global, and the outside local and outside global are going to be the same in this case because we're doing source NAT. Now, if we were doing static NAT and we wanted PC2 to be able to talk, we'd have to go into the configuration and configure an additional static mapping. We did that in the static NAT video. Let's see what happens now that we have dynamic NAT with a pool configured. Let me go to PC2, and I'm going to do a ping. Ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Great, we have reachability. Let's check the NAT translation table again. Look at that, we have another entry here for PC2. We can tell that 10.10.10.2, which is the inside local IP address, remember the internal private IP address, only locally routable, was translated to 11.11.11.2. The protocol is ICMP because we did a ping. The destination IP address is 8.8.8.8, .8 that's our outside global IP. And again, these two values here are the same because we are doing source NAT. That's cool, right? It used the configured pool to automatically or dynamically translate IPs from the private internal network of 10.10.10.0 slash 24 
to the inside global pool of 11.11.11.0 slash 29. If you wanted to clear the NAT translations, you can do that by saying clear IP NAT translations star. That's going to clear everything. And let's look at the show IP NAT statistics. This is another helpful command that I like to do. So we cleared the translation. So it's showing zero here, zero dynamic. The most translations the router has seen is four. And really clear, telling us what our outside interface is. Our outside interface is gig zero zero. Our inside interface is gig zero is one. And the amount of hits that we've seen are 20. We've had 20 packets translated. One of them has expired. And here's some information about our dynamic mappings, right? Because we're using dynamic NAT with a pool. It's telling us that we're using access list 10 with pool named my pool. The parameters of that pool have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 248. That's a slash 29. The starting IP is 11.11.11.1, .11 and the ending IP is 11.11.11.6. .11 and there are no dynamic translations now because we cleared the translation, so it's telling us that we have a total of six addresses, and we've allocated 0%. Really cool stuff. If this information was populated and you wanted to clear them, you can do so by saying clear IP NAT statistics. And that's it. We've configured dynamic NAT using a pool of IP addresses. That's about it for dynamic NAT using a pool of IP addresses. You can see why this is a little bit better than using static NAT, right? You don't have to configure a static NAT mapping for every single IP address that gets translated. You let the router make that decision for you. I hope you all found this video helpful. If so, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can follow Network Engineer Pro on Facebook. I put all the links in the description. That's it for now. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.